a free lawnmower, what could possibly go wrong? Well, it doesn't work. So in this video, I'm just going to take you through the very simple basic steps to try and diagnose these machines. They're not very um, difficult or complicated. They're very basic and they serve a purpose as a nice little mower in, uh, in a yard. If this is the right machine for you and you're having issues with it, then this uh, video is for you. Let's get into it. Here we go. So this is Aaron, the editor's lawnmower. It was given to him by a relative and it hasn't ran in quite a while. Now, there's a few things that if you're getting a free lawnmower, you should expect to pay. Um, if it's been sitting for a while, uh, you're probably gonna have some fuel issues. The battery's likely gonna be dead and you should do a service to it. Spark plug, oil change, things like that. Now this, I think, this is Troy built and available in Canadian Tire, Home Depot, things like that. Perfect for a little subdivision home. Great to hold a kid in one hand and drive and enjoy the tractor life. But it's frustrating when it doesn't want to start. So first things first is we need to have a good battery. Luckily, somebody stole the battery out of this one already. So we replaced the battery. Um, the battery, uh, if you can't find it, um, look for a red and black wire and it's tucked down below. It's hard to find the battery when it isn't with the machine. So just keep that in mind. Don't start ripping plastics off and, and trying to find a battery when there is just no battery. So we've got a battery in place, um, but now it won't, it won't turn over. Um, lights don't come on, uh, the hazards, and it won't turn over. Now, these things are very meticulous for safeties. You wanna make sure that it's in park. So foot all the way down. There's a lever on the right that does the speeds. Make sure that's down into the P. Every one of them will have a seat sensor on it, meaning that as soon as you get off the seat, it won't start either. That's so that you don't cut your toes off when you're cutting your grass and your flip flops. So that being said, when you turn your deck on, there's also a switch to make sure that the deck isn't running when you get off. Uh, some of them will let you get off with it running, but if the deck is engaged, um, it won't let you start it that way either. So every one of these switches, basically it just connects two wires together. If it's open, it means that the power from the key has to go through all the switches and all of them have to be connected to make it to the starter. If it's open like this, it's like cutting the wire in half and it won't start. So what got me on this one is that there is also a safety on the cover. Now this is the first time I've seen this. While we were moving it into the trailer, we stepped on this and we jumped this plastic piece on this sensor. So it was actually this sensor that wasn't connected. If you see that, it was just on top because somebody stood on it here. So over the winter, that's more than likely to happen as you're getting a snowblower and putting your bikes and stuff away. So put that back in place, tighten this, and see if it turns over. Now, um, before it starts turning over, it's up to you if you wanna do a spark plug change and an oil change or whatnot, but um, these are also very inexpensive in the fact that they are basically a throwaway mower. So you can start throwing money into it, but if there's a major issue, that money's kind of gone. So for a unit like this, I wouldn't hesitate to try and start it and make sure that it runs. And if it runs, then do the oil change and do the spark plug. That being said, you do want to make sure that there's oil in it. So every one of them has got a dipstick and you want to have the, the oil up to the crosshairs there. It being air cooled, there is no coolant. So this is really the only fluid that you need to check. So it's got oil in it, it should crank over. But no start. The mower needs three things to run. It needs fuel, air, and spark. So the cover, there's two little screws on the back here underneath on this one, you take those out and then the clips go in. You can get at more of the engine here. This one is a 420 cc overhead valve and your air filter is right here. This would be your pre-filter. So there's a little screen that catches all of the, the fluff and the grass. And then underneath here is your carburetor. So the carburetor's only job is to take the fuel, mix it with the air and put it into the engine. Spark plug is right over here. To get at that, we'll just take these two bolts out we can get at this. So we'll pull that. You can do it! Oh, there we go. So, 
spark plug is underneath there. Spark plugs are usually one of two sizes. 5.8 is the smaller one, 13 16 is the bigger one. I think this is the bigger one. Spark plug looks good. Edges are nice and sharp for the electrode. Now is a good time to replace it. But before we do that, we'll check if we have spark. Now there's a couple ways to do this. If you have uh, a buddy in the garage with you and some of you are drinking beer, just get him to hold the spark plug and crank it over. What you wanna see is a little spark that goes between the tip and here, between the electrode and the tip. But in the daytime, it's really hard to see. So if, you're, if a buddy's holding on to it, uh, he'll definitely feel it even if he doesn't see it. But because Aaron knows this trick, what we can do is find a ground. Hopefully that bolt is properly grounded. Turn it over. Okay, so you see the spark? I can feel a little bit through my finger, so it's it will be a better spark when there's a when there's a proper ground. So we'll throw this back in for now. The number is F6 RTC Aaron. So you can go ahead and order that. <laughs> so we've got spark. More than likely we've got air because now we're open. So it must be a fuel issue. So if the fuel is old, it loses its volatility and doesn't spark as good. Usually that's not the problem. The problem is usually the ethanol that's in our fuel. Um, we're in Ontario, Canada. It might be different in the States, but we have 15% ethanol in our 87 octane. So if your lawn isn't that big and you're not spending hundreds of dollars on fuel a year, opt for the premium because it doesn't have ethanol in it and your fuel won't go all gummy like the ethanol does. So we want to check the fuel. This is full to the top. It still smells like fuel. You could opt to drain it here. A lot of these tanks don't have a shutoff on it. So if you follow it out, usually there's something that looks like this, which is your filter. You can pop this off, drain it into a, a pail, use it to start a campfire or throw it in your car. It'll mix with the rest of the fuel and it'll still burn if it's clean. Um, but this fuel is clean. We're gonna assume that this fuel is clean. What we need to do is check for flow. Now, um, this is a very small machine, but, also very dangerous. I've seen a lot of shops and garages and houses catch fire because you start working with the fuel. You spill a little bit of fuel, it lays down. Um, you're, you maybe you want to pour, feel the need to pour a little bit of fuel down the carburetor. It backfires, it lights up. There's, there's dead grass all the way around. So just heed the warning that you need to be cautious with the fuel. And I'm not joking around that. It goes very, very quick. It's all plastic, it melts and it catches fire and you literally a minute and she's done for. So fire extinguisher close by, do it outside, just be careful. So what we're gonna do is check and make sure that we've got fuel running out of here. Um, and then we're gonna follow that along. So basically the fuel comes out of the tank, goes through a filter. So you can check it before the filter and after the filter. If you have good flow before the filter, but not after, change your filter. If you've got good fuel coming out of the filter, then it's making its way to the carburetor. If it is not making it to the carburetor, um, this one has an electronic shutoff on it, this little solenoid right here. This is right behind this cover. Take a couple bolts off. We can pull this cover off. This little guy is an on-off to quickly shut the machine off and is usually tied to all of the safeties. So we need to make sure that you got 12 volts to this plug right here and that the other wire is properly grounded and that this switch works. Now, you can take this out, um, spin this right out using a half, this one uses a half inch wrench. You can spin this out, disconnect the wires first because you don't want to twirl them up and pull the wires out. But if you spin this out, you can turn the key on and, and see if this pin goes in or stays put. Uh, what can happen is the ethanol gums that up and then it just stays closed. So we'll start at the front and then work our way back and see what's going on with this little girl. Okay, fuel shut off. If you've got proper pliers, uh, they work as well, but for the average person, two washers and a pair of ice grips works. Just pinch this off, check it by the filter. If your lines are cracked at all or dry or flex and don't flex like this, you're gonna wanna replace those. 
So, see if we got some flow. Oh, we got good flow. So, our filter is nice and clear. That's the best we could hope for. So we can put that back. Now, don't leave cups of fuel laying around. They get knocked over. Um, and don't leave it in a Timmy's cup because you might accidentally take a little swig too. So you don't want to do that either. All right, so now we can put our, our clamps after the filter and we'll pull this little solenoid off. First, we'll check with a voltmeter. We'll make sure that we have 12 volts to this little wire, which is what tells it to turn on. Okay, so we've got 13 volts there. So that means that I had my battery on a charger for a while and that that wire has 12 volts. So we can take the ground off and see about pulling that solenoid off. I've got the fuel pinched off. So, looks like somebody recently, probably about two hours ago, scraped all the carbon off of this. And now this moves nice and freely. Spring out and when you give it power, return. So let's see if that works. Plug that wire back in again and just touch it to ground. That's what you want it to do. So that's working. So that is not the issue. Now turn the key off. Make sure that there's no power. Now we'll open this up and see if there's any fuel that comes out of there. That means we've got fuel going all the way through and coming out the carburetor here. Open that up. We've got fuel going. No fuel. So we have an issue between here and here. The fuel should be going through there now and coming out of here. We need to pull this carburetor off. Another thing you can do before you do that is you can pull this, this plug out right here and fuel should come out and that's a drain. Now you should do that at the end of the season so there's not old stale fuel in the carburetor itself that would keep it from gumming up. Uh, that's another telltale sign that you're getting fuel all the way to there. So um, now before I pull the carburetor off, I was going to try one more thing. Sometimes when you choke it extra hard, you can get it running, meaning that you can put your hand on it or a piece of cardboard. We'll try that, that will, that will choke it off more. What happens is the engine creates such a high vacuum because it's a piston coming down, trying to pull in air, it'll pull whatever. And because there's such a high vacuum, it'll still pull some fuel through. Um, uh, that'll tell you that, okay, at least the engine's running and that it's a fueling issue just to confirm that. So put this back on again, because this is working the way it should. Don't forget the little seal. If there's a little washer laying around, turn the washers back on. Screw it back in. I'll just plug that back in again. Okay, try cranking it over and adding a little extra choke. Just a piece of cardboard works, clipboard, piece of wood. That's a good sign. So I did fire, that's our spark. Let's see how it's running and it's, it's running on just that little bit of air. It's not enough to pull fuel through anymore. So I know that the engine at least will run poorly. If you want to be brave, you can take a little bit of fuel and pour it down the carburetor. Um, just little bits, a little squirt bottle. Just realize that that's extremely flammable and dangerous. Um, and I know that it will run on that, but that's not going to solve our issue. So we're going to pull the carb. All right, two bolts here and then one nut right here. 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter, you can lift that up. And then we can just slide this up and out of the way, carefully. And then we can get out our carburetor. Be careful with your gaskets, put them in a safe place. You can reuse them. Uh, nothing wrong with reusing the, the gaskets, although you can buy uh, new ones if you so desire. Now, two little springs. Right now is a good time to take your camera and take a couple pictures of exactly how everything went together what position these blades are in so that nothing's flipped or turned. Everything is a proportion. Take a video and scan nicely around with your phone. That way you get all the different angles in case you forget or don't know or don't understand how something goes back together again. 
that is your best friend. All right, slide that off. We'll disconnect the linkages. Because it goes down and then over, you need to have to like pry it up that way. Be a little aggressive. See what I mean? And then that's fine. You can just bend that back after you're done. Slide that off. Good thing the tire's flat. Pop our fuel line off, making sure that it's still pinched off. Okay, let's tear into this thing. All right, so basic function of your carburetor. We've done this in other videos, but we'll do a quick recap. Your fuel comes in through here and it fills your fuel bowl. The main passage is blocked off by uh, a shutoff in this case. Some of them have something manual you can turn to shut it off. In this case, it's electronic. We've figured out that there is no fuel flow between here and here. So we're gonna take it apart. Now this is called your fuel bowl. What happens is your fuel comes in and fills up this bowl. Now in there is a needle and a seat and a float. So as the float comes up, it pushes up against the needle and it closes the seat. And that is a passageway between the float bowl and this jet right here. So when, you're, when your float is down, it means that there's fuel able to flow and fill the bowl, but you don't wanna to fill too much because otherwise it will run in and start flooding out your engine. So the way to control it is to monitor that with a float. This is your main jet. This is where your fuel needs to be coming out of. So as your air is rushing past your two throttle plates, it creates a bit of a vacuum or a negative uh, pressure and it'll pull fuel up into it and into your engine. Now, your first plate is your choke. Uh, what happens when you first start it is you wanna pull on your choke and what it does is close this plate off. And what that does is increase the vacuum in the engine, which will pull extra fuel through that jet. When I was covering the main intake for the carburetor through the air filter, I was closing off 99% of it, whereas this still only covers maybe 85. That 99 creates enough vacuum that sometimes you can get it to start. That's handy for first starts in the spring when you got some old stale fuel in here maybe and it just doesn't want to ignite as good. Um, and then the rest of the season, you're okay to just work off of your, uh, your plate. On the other side of that is your throttle, main throttle blade. This is what it looks like at an idle. And this is what it looks like at full throttle when you want to get the grass done and go in and have a couple beers. You want to make sure that these are never left loose because if these fall into an engine, you might as well just buy a new lawnmower. That being said, um, we have an issue between here and here. So let's pull this fuel bowl off and see what we can see. There is your float. You pull that off with that. You pull this out. And that did not want to come out. So you see how dirty this is? This is all gummy from the ethanol. I actually had to pry this out. It should fall out. It should definitely fall out. So the fuel fills up this bowl, but it gets picked up from this little tube right here, which sits in the middle of this. And it needs this plunger to come back and allow fuel to go through this little hole here, up into here, and then into your engine here. So um, without fuel coming out of here, we still don't have fuel coming out of here. So the fuel bowl was dry. So what, what all that happened was this needle got stuck in here even though the float was down, it didn't allow fuel to go into this bowl in the first place. And you can see how dry that is. So once we open this up, the fuel bowl will fill up. We know that our plunger goes in. That allows the fuel to come into this little hole here where it gets siphoned up by this tube, goes through this jet, comes out here and goes into the engine. Our issue was that this needle and seat was jammed tight in here and was not allowing the fuel to flow into the fuel bowl. We'll clean this up. We, we cleaned off the needle, 
We'll make sure that this passage is open. We'll make sure that this passage is open when we pull this back out again, and we will have a running engine. Here we go. Now you can also bring these carburetors away as it sits, and they have these ultrasonic cleaners. They work really good as well. As normal, we're working late at night and everybody's closed. So we'll just try and clean it ourselves. Okay, so now these, you can just look through them and make sure that you see the light. The light is what you want to see. Now, if you can see this one, there's a tiny bit of crud in this one. That little bit is enough to give you grievances. That's the difference between two hours of cutting the grass and an hour and 40 minutes. So it's all about efficiency. <laughs> that's, that's two whole beers that you're missing out on. Perfect. <laughs> You can feel the air coming out of here. So that one's open. That's good. That part of it is done. So gross. And these are dentist picks and they work amazing. And they, what happens is the, the shoulders get thin as they scrape people's teeth. <laughs> so they have to throw them away. But if you ask politely, say, can I have some of these, those old picks? Generally, they let you go and they're, they've got flat tips and pointy tips and just don't poke yourself with them because you get gingivitis in your hand, but they work awesome for this stuff. I had a girl break up with me because I told her that she was a nurse and mechanics and nurses basically do the same job except they have it easier because the nurse or the patient tells the nurse exactly what hurts. We have to figure it out from a mute um, patient and she kind of felt offended by that and it didn't work out but I'm a dentist and a nurse and a doctor and a mechanic and a plumber and electrician so you can suck it then you want that falling out that, uh, that's what you want. So we can pop that back in again. There's a little spring here somewhere. What was it, one point? There it is. <laughs> yeah, don't blow all your parts across the shop. That's also very important. I can go back on. So we can see this in action now. If you can see that going up and down, that's what's supposed to happen, but we'll put the fuel in there. You can blow in here. If you've got a clean tube, you can blow in there and push on it, it should stop the flow. When you open it, it should go past. This is honestly why she broke up with me. I kept doing, <laughs> my lips kept tasting like gas. That's what you want. So you can hook the fuel line up there and then play with this and see if the fuel comes out. I know that it's fixed. It's getting late. I'm gonna put it back together again. I'm just going to take this out quick and blow that clean. And then we should be good. You basically have to hook your linkage back up the way it was, but Aaron's like directly in my light, so. <laughs> There's a little on your hole. There we go. Spring back in. So small. It is easier if you take it out from the other side. But okay, um, that should allow fuel through. So we should be able to take this out and then turn the key on and see if fuel starts coming out of there. Okay, 
We got fuel coming out of there. Put the rest of it back together again, and it should fire up. stop the video there there's not much anything to do if you got some wd-40 spray anything that moves steering anything that squeaks shoot it down in there it doesn't hurt um, flat tires just put the gunk in there uh, it'll leak in small spots around the rim um, what you do is deflate the tire put the gunk in there inflate it that the gunk kind of fills all the little spots that are leaking and your tires are good to go take your blades off um, and then sharpen them very straightforward lots of videos on that other than that make sure that your belts are in good shape maybe have one on hand if you can read a number on a belt write it down keep it somewhere so if you run into a belt issue you can take care of that then pressure wash it maintain it and uh, change your oil and your spark plug and you've got a nice running machine again so um, generally if it won't start in the spring you're gonna have to do basically what i did and run premium fuel because there's no ethanol in it. So thanks for watching guys. We've got lots of other videos, how to's, uh, equipment reviews, everything else on the channel. We also have another channel where we build cool stuff. We've got uh, LS Swap Mercedes, GTOs, lots of cool stuff going on. So thanks for watching. Uh, remember you can do this yourself. Be careful, especially around fuel um, and have some fun doing it. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich because you have to pay somebody else to do this and you're never going to get ahead. So here we go.